Crafting in MMORPGs can often make or break a game. If the most desired gear and equipment comes from crafting, then the entire artisan system impacts the game. However, if the best gear comes from dungeons and raids, then crafting is often limited to consumables, and sometimes not even that much. In a recent live stream, Stephen Sharif talked about the crafting system and how there might be a mini game in crafting for Ashes of Creation. Now I'm here to say I respect the idea of a mini game. Very few people want a single button crafting system because that's just not fun. People are looking for a good crafting system. Mini games can be fun. They can be a solution, at least for a while. But after 10,000 crafts, it gets boring and tiresome. For a mini game to be successful, well, there has to be some level of risk. And crafters, they don't mind risk. They just don't want RNG risk. And building a mini game without risk means you've built a chore and not a game. Look at Final Fantasy XIV, for example. There's 24 buttons you can press when crafting, so it makes it seem like this is going to be a really complicated process. However, every expansion, every patch, somebody comes up with a simple macro that guarantees a 100% success rate when you want to high quality your results. So if there's a way to just simply high quality things with no risk, no thought, then why do you even bother having all the other abilities? Why doesn't Square Enix just reduce the total number of abilities down to the handful you see on the screen? So the question becomes, how do we make a crafting system that requires the player to be actively involved, that rewards players for investing in their crafting, that doesn't penalize crafters with an RNG-based system, that gives a sense of accomplishment in both crafting and progression. Now I know this sounds like an impossible task, but trust me, it's doable because we're not going to try to create a crafting system with a mini game. We're going to build a manufacturing and logistics system, and we're going to address this in three parts, personal skills, infrastructure development, and blueprint research and design. Now the baseline of any good production system is that it should take raw materials, time, and a facility to make an item. More advanced items should take intermediate goods, not just raw materials. Gatherers gather iron ore, which is a raw material. That iron ore is used to make iron ingots. Iron ingots plus other materials are used to forge an iron sword blade. And that iron sword blade plus other materials is used to make an iron sword. Now, how do we make this entire process fun and engaging? Well, first we need to break it down to the smallest part. Let's say it takes 10 iron ore to make one iron ingot. And it takes 10 iron ingots to make one iron sword blade. Ultimately, that is going to take 100 iron ore to make that one sword blade. And that's a lot of iron ore. So how do we know how to make anything? We start with a blueprint. And this blueprint says, for one iron ingot, we need 10 iron ore. And that will take 100 seconds at a processing station. Now we want to reward players who devote time to their crafting skills, which means as a player, a player could get better at crafting. And so for this example, they could reduce their material costs by 10 to 20% and processing time by 10 to 20 seconds. So that iron ingot could now take only eight iron ore and 80 seconds. This means it costs that particular crafter 20% less to make an ingot. Now that crafter could spend that money on gear, or that crafter could turn around and invest their money back into their facility. This means their production facility has become more efficient in material and time. So that ingot again gets another reduction. Now that iron ingot is only costing six iron ore 
and only taking 60 seconds at the processing station. Finally, you have the blueprint itself. When we start, we have a very basic blueprint. And as we research up that blueprint, we see it becomes much more detailed. Much more detailed means that it becomes much more efficient. And that means that that one iron ingot now only takes three iron ore and 30 seconds at a processing station when you factor in everything together. The thing here is that blueprint research and design creates an entirely new artisan class for dealing with just blueprints. You can have a time investment for researching them and making them better. You can have a facilities investment that in order to do the highest level research or research on more advanced blueprints, you need to make better facilities. You can copy them, you can trade them, you've literally made a new commodity, but a commodity that makes the entire artisan system work. The blueprint market in EVE Online is well established, and while I know most of you will not understand EVE Online, I know most of you can grasp numbers. What you see on the screen here is this is an off the market blueprint with absolutely no research done to it. So you can see these numbers down here, 24,000, 4,500, not a lot. However, every penny adds up. Now, when I display a researched blueprint, you will notice that this blueprint is 10% uh, material efficiency researched, 20% time efficiency researched, and you will notice that these numbers down here have gone down. 21,600, 4050. So on a mass scale, if you were to start producing this particular item, you would save a lot of resources because your blueprint is researched. Just as an example of that more advanced, requiring advanced pieces, you'll see this particular ship does not have material costs at the bottom. It requires individual intermediate parts. So this doesn't require straight raw materials. You have to make a capital propulsion engine. You have to make a capital turret hardpoint before you can make this particular ship. And again, when you show a researched copy, you'll notice that at 9% and 10%, you don't get a huge discount, but you do get a slight one, which each one of those pieces would then cost less, which is how the entire advanced material blueprint system could function in a good manufacturing and logistics game. Now, I've heard a lot of people talk about how they'd like to have to fill up processing units with water or lumber or fuel and move things around. And I have to say, yeah, okay, that seems like it's just a lot of clicking. It seems like there's just a lot of tasks. Remember, that's not a mini game because games are supposed to be fun. If you're making a mini game, then me running up and clicking on something and having to add water just doesn't seem to, you know, do it for me. A lot of people have said they would love a full immersive crafting system where everything is experimental. And I'd love that too. But let's be honest, as soon as one person figures it out, then everyone is just going to copy the steps because you know that would be top shelf content creation material. Uh, I've heard some people say that they absolutely have to have a mini game of some sort. I'd agree, if you absolutely need to have some sort of RNG based mini game, what if the mini game was required if you wanted to sign the item? If you fail, then the only minigame negative consequence is that the item goes unsigned. So if you must have a minigame, let's give you one that doesn't trash the item. It Maybe it fumbles your signature, maybe it drops letters out. We can, you know, it gives you that little, oops, I failed, but it doesn't destroy the item. But this whole video was just a bunch of my ideas. You tell me, what do you think there needs to be for there to be a good crafting system? Are you a one button crafting system person? Are you a mini game person? Or do you kind of like my idea of manufacturing logistics? So go ahead with that. Leave your comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment, and of course, ring the bell for notifications because like 9% of you have, are even subscribed or ring the bell. And if you like Christmas music, you see I have the Christmas lights up in the background. This is a uh, November 2022 video. I have over 
five, uh, five, 50, 50, 50 Christmas tracks over on PGN Music. Uh, there's a link in the description below. So if you like Christmas music or you're a content creator who wants to use Christmas music, I have plenty of that for you. I will talk to you guys next time, either live on Twitch or back here on YouTube.